Whoa, I was always a super hyper kid and super creative. And I remember back in the day in Brazil, I used to be fascinated by the commercials that I used to see on the TV. And I remember telling my mom, I was like, I wanna work on something like this one day. When it came to time to go to college, I went to do advertisement and marketing. And I remember the first class that we had in the second year was about creativity. And by then, I was sold. I was all in. I was like, I need to learn this, how to use this software called Photoshop because I wanna create this amazing image that I was seeing on TV and magazines. And by then I knew, like, I wanna do this for the rest of my life. My artistic style, it's kind of a little bit all over the place as far as versatility, because I really proud myself on being a very well-rounded artist that can tackle any, any type of style, like matte painting, like product, like fashion, like, I proud myself to come from a school that is like the way that I learned how to retouch is like back in the day you had to be ready for anything and we used to be proud of that. I feel like nowadays people tend to be a little more specialist in some things and that's okay. Like I think every artist can, can do and can go in each way that they want. But for me it was always the challenge and like I feel like how this translates to my portfolio. I feel like I have beautiful colors and I try to always make images that are beautiful and are impactful in some sort of way. Being from the level of contrast, being from the, the dynamic angles that I'm using or trying to explore. And I think the mindset that always pushing myself to get a better result helps me to keep my mind sharp and my creativity and try to be always original because nowadays it's really hard and people tend to do things that are very similar to other artists. So I try to stay out of that and try to create my own lane or at least push myself to do something different every single time. Oh yeah, one of the pivotal moments that I had was when I got the opportunity to move to America. And I remember doing a freelance for this guy, Dave, because he found me on Behance. He sent me a message and he was like, hey man, I love your images. I wish we could do something together. Send me your email. And he replied back to me. He gave me a chance and he said, hey, I'm gonna give you one image to do, but the project has 10. But if you make this one and it's good and is a good result, we're gonna give you all the 10. So I did, I had a full-time job back in the day in Brazil. I did this at night, staying late and not sleeping very much during that week. I was able to get all the 10 images. I did all the 10 images. He loved it. And then came the pivotal moment when he asked me and I literally thought it was a joke. He he messaged me and said, how would you like to come work in the US? And I was like, yes, absolutely. Like, I would love to. But at the time, I didn't put a lot of faith on what he was saying. But a month later, I got an email from his lawyers and I knew that it was truth and my life changed completely. This was around 2000, end of 2012 when we started talking. And I ended up moving to US in 2014 and I'm here since then. What artists or movements have had the most significant impact of your work? Mm, man, I feel like the artist that had big impact on my work was Tim Tader, it was Mike Campau, it was Arstanea, that are studio from Poland, and of course my fellow Brazilians, Platinum, and other studios there but I feel like I try to, I'm like a kind of a freak when it comes to this because I look at work uh, and I search for different studios and 
all the time. It's kind of my fun because I feel like you kind of build your own library when you're trying to look at projects or people that are much better than you. So in the beginning of my career, they were the people that I loved the most. But nowadays, it's a much broader selection that I have. For example, nowadays, one studio that I love, it's called Recon Farmhouse. And they have, a, they have a bunch of studios all around the world, in London, New York, in LA, in Germany. And they do a lot of cool high-end retouching that I actually love it. Let's go to the next one here. How do you find inspiration for your art? And how do you overcome creative blocks? Inspiration is kind of everywhere because I try to allow myself to experience cool things, to be happy, to try to do things that I love. And I'm always like, because I'm so hyper and so creative, I'm always trying to do a new personal project to keep myself sharp. And how do I overcome creative blocks? Will. I never give up. I try, 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 try. And if I can't solve in that day, I go to bed and I come back the next day with vengeance and I try to have the best day that I ever had because I truly believe if you have one bad day and you come back with vengeance and with good energy and you have like five good days, you're not even gonna remember the bad day you had. So I think it's always the mindset of like, you can lose this battle, but we're not gonna let you lose the war. Next one, what themes or messenger do you typically explore in your work and why? Hmm, that's a very broad question. I feel like I try to do things that are visually impactful and have some sort of storytelling and some sort of concept behind because I think it's important to sell, like, because if we're gonna show this in your portfolio, it's specifically like, for your personal work, when you have like fully freedom to do whatever you want, I feel like you have to push yourself and you have to do something that kind of, kind of leaves your creative mark. So that's what I try to do. I try to always try to do something new, something that I didn't try before and push myself. How do you think your cultural background has influenced in your artistic pers perspective? Mm, colors colors. Brazilian love colors and I feel like most of my culture influenced me on um, the color aspect of things and also like how to face work, like to keep a good energy, to be able to laugh from, from challenges that I have and like always try to think positive no matter how bad the situation you are. So that helps a lot, especially when you move to a different country. And like when I came here, I didn't know anybody. I barely knew how to speak English. So it's like, if you don't have a good attitude, man, it's gonna be hard to keep going. What challenges have you faced in your artistic career and how, how have you overcome them? Well, one of the biggest challenges, like I was saying, was the language. When I moved here, I, in the first three, four months, I was feeling like I was not gonna make it because I was not able to express myself. I was not able to be like the Hugo from Brazil. Because when you move to a different culture or a different country, you have, it takes a little time for you to adapt. And I remember it was funny because it's like, I remember the first time that I dream in English and it was something that blew my mind. And that day I was like, okay, I got this. And honestly, like throughout this, all these eight years that I'm here, I think it's just the mindset of like, you can't beat me. Like you can beat me today, but you're not gonna be able to beat me through all the, through all my life because I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna get better. I'm gonna learn and it might take a little bit, but whenever I learn, I'm not gonna forget anymore and it's gonna be hard to beat me. How do you know when a piece is finished and how do you handle the fear of imperfection? Wow, this is an amazing question. <laughs> well, uh, to know when a piece is finished, it's a very hard part because 
especially on personal projects that we want to do something that is creative, most of the time, I'm just going to tell you a little bit of how I do, like, let's suppose that I finish an image, like the Inner Thoughts project that I finished a, a month ago, and I was like, I knew it, lo it was looking good, and usually when I'm doing personal projects, I try to not show to anybody before because I want to see if I can if I can harness like all this idea and the feeling that I'm putting on the project and if I can transmit that clearly to my audience. And I usually test it out with my wife so she can give me an honest and like kind of unbiased opinion. And, but man, it's hard because we always trying to push ourselves and we always trying to make something great. But sometimes we lose a lot of time doing final touches and like making sure that everything's good. And sometimes I send my image to my phone. I let, I go to bed, woke up in the next day and then I look again. And so how do I know if image is, a project is finished? I give myself a little buffer on time so I can make the final decisions. And I ended up calling done once I'm happy with the result, I feel, I feel like. And the other thing is like, how do you handle the fear of imperfection? I feel like that's, it's not the fear of imperfection that drives me, it's the fear of not doing a, a job that I'm gonna be proud of. I think like that's what drives me the most. It's almost like I am so afraid to suck and to do bad work and to do something that I'm not proud that that drives me to be great way more than that. It's like, it's like I never want to have that like even close to me. Like, of course, I make mistakes, and like I said, like I'm not a per I'm not a perfect person. I'm not a perfect retouching. Not everything that I do it's perfect. But it's like in this is kind of like how my mind works. How do you balance your personal and professional life as an artist? It's hard. It's hard because I am what I do and I love what I do. So I, I balance, I try to give myself breaks. I try to have trips with my wife here and there, but honestly, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I love what I do and I'm always working. Even when, when, I, when I'm not working, I'm thinking about like, what is gonna be my next project? What I can do to like, to differentiate myself? What can I do to impact the impact the market a little more and bring me more clients like i think i love my work so much that it's like it's not like it's not work like even if i was rich and i didn't have i didn't need any money anymore i would probably do art and probably do retouching i don't see it as a problem i see it as like this is this is just who i am this is what i do and i'm happy this way and i'm probably if I'm lucky, I'm gonna do this until I'm very old. And yeah, that's it. How do you handle criticism and use to grow in your artistic practice? I think you always have to be open to critic and criticism because, man, everybody has their own opinion. And it's like, I think the most important thing is to learn how to filter the critiques that you get. Because it's like, Especially if you're on the job and you're doing this for a client, it's not personal. It's not personal. We're talking about the work and we're not talking about you, your skills, your reputation, anything. And I feel like most of times a lot of people cannot separate both of these things. And it's a problem because if you take everything personal, you're gonna start getting mad with people, you're gonna start bringing bad energy to the set or what you're working on. And it's not about you, it's about the work. So my tip would be learn how to separate that because you're gonna, you're gonna have a lot of peace of mind that way. And trust me, this is not something that I, when I came here and I started my career, it was easy for me. It was something that I learned through the years because when you're young, you just want to conquer the world and change the world and show them who is the best retoucher possible. 
But with time, you learn how to pick your battles and you learn that it's not always about you. It's about the project, it's about the client, it's about the team. What is your favorite piece that you have creative and can you explain the story behind it? Well, this is gonna sound silly, but my favorite piece is the latest one that I did. It's kind of always my last job, like the, my, the last job that I finish. And what I love it so much, it's called Inner Thoughts. So on this one, I was trying to shoot uh, my wife. And it's a kind of a portrait project but we did with a low aperture camera and a bubble machine to create this crazy bubble environment with bokeh and a lot of different things happening. And those environments in my head, they were, they're gonna represent different feelings, different inner thoughts, like for example, joy, desire, wonder, so it was really cool to do something more conceptual and to push myself because I'm not used to shoot my own stuff. And on this one, I pushed myself a lot and I was able to get a result that I was really proud of. And, but honestly, it's all, I, I'm pretty sure that whenever I do my, pers my next personal project, that's gonna be my favorite because it's just how my brain works. Are there any specific techniques or media you prefer to work with? And if so, why? Well, my favorite technique, it's called dodge and burn. And I love it because for me, it's a little bit like therapy because it's a technique that you use to shape the object, objects or skins or background, whatever. You shape light and while you're painting on the computer. It usually is like very detailed and I love it because I can put some, some Pink Floyd or some nice electronic set and I can just zone out. And usually I have a lot of fun doing that. And I also love to create moods, to play with colors, to grab us, to have a set of photos that I need to bring to life that I can like imagine the art director comes and say, Hey man, make it look good. And it's like, this is kind of like one of the best things, but it's kind of hard too, because you have a lot of freedom. So you need to kind of know what you want. But I love this kind of challenge, specifically when you have to do color and play with lighting. So I think that will be those two for me. How do you stay motivated and disciplined in your practice? Like I said, I love what I do. For, for me, it's no problem. I'm living the dream. Since I moved here to America, I'm living the dream. And that was eight years ago, and every year gets better. Every year I accomplish something new, something it makes me a better artist. So for me, it's, it's like, it's, it's fun. Like, at, I keep myself motivated because I love what I do. Like for me, a new day is a new opportunity to come and just do my best work again. How do you view the role of art in society? And what impact do you hope your work will have? I think art is really important for society, especially for conceptual things and to sell ideas, to make to, to bring more joy to people's life in, in some sort of way. I think people can look at my work and they can smile. It can make their day better. It can be a moment that they see an image that I did and they're like, oh, like, look how cool this is. Or like, look how creative this is. Like, I was not expecting that. So I think if I can make this mark and be reminded of an artist that had good work, that he had, uh, a good set of artworks on their arsenal or portfolio, I would be happy with that. How do you continue to learn and grow as an artist? I try to push myself every day and I kind of, I am my worst boss. So I do like a weekly review on everything that I do. And if I need to adjust anything, I'll adjust. And if I need to keep going, I'll keep going. Wait, there's a second part here. Are there any new mediums or techniques would you like to explore? Yes, I would like to do more of the 
crafted work that I done before because I had some projects. If you go to my portfolio, that I work with nails. So we pretty much build this sketch in a table like this big, and I built the the sketch and I put nails or other materials all over and then we photograph it. And I even did one with Kobe Bryant that I built the frame and I sculpt with beans and then I glued the beans because Kobe being Bryant and then we put the resin over. So that type of thing that getting out of the computer and working in an environment that you have no control Z, that you have to plan much more and like, just let yourself go. It's like therapy for me. It's like, it's an amazing feeling, especially because it's a physical piece that you develop. Like for example, my last one that I did, it's a Michael Jordan rookie, rookie photo. And I'm a big basketball fan, as you can see. And that one is like 30 by 40. It's pretty big in my house and it was a lot of fun doing. And I live in my living room and every time I look, it's like, it kind of inspires me back. So I also, I, I wanna do more stuff out of the computer. I think that would be cool. What advice would you give to aspiring artists who are just in starting on their journey? See if this is really your passion. Because I feel like the most important thing that you have to have in any field, it's passion. Because if you have passion, if you love what you do, you're going to get through the bad days. You're going to get through the hard periods of learning. You're going to get through the hard criticism that you're going to get. You're going to be able to see the bad days in a better way, if you, if you understand what I'm saying. Because if you don't have passion and you just focus on like money or or I wanna be in this level of society or anything, like at some point that is not gonna carry you all the way. It's not a strong enough. So not even for retouchers, but in anything you do, you have to have passion first. If you don't love it, it's very hard to become successful. How do you see your art evolve in the future? And what are your long-term goals as an artist? I want to do more personal work. I want to do more artworks outside of the computer, like I mentioned. I would like to try to go back to do art expos because I did that back in the day with the my beside work. And it was a good way for me to kind of train my brain and kind of renew my creative uh, mind so I could apply for a digital too. And now with this AI revolution, I want to try it out, I want to see how everything evolves and I want to find a way to incorporate that as a creative tool, not as my creative director because I feel like as, much, as far as you evolve in your career, we tend to be more picky, we, we tend to want to control more of every production that we're doing. So. I want to explore more of that and I, was, I want to try to use all the tools I can so I can have the best arsenal of skills and I can combine with the experience that I had so far to create art that means something to me and means something to people. Can you describe a memorable experience or collaboration that had a profound impact on your art or the way that you approach your work? Mm. I think it was when I moved to Vitro, because Vitro was my second job in America. I was with Eleven for nine months, and I ended up, ended up not working out there, and I got the chance to move to San Diego. It was a bigger, much bigger agency. I went from like five employees at Eleven to 150 at Vitro, and we had huge accounts like ASICs, Adidas, Toyo tires, like a lot, Red Robin, fast food. So for me, it was like, are you gonna evolve? Or are you gonna, you're gonna be fired? So it was a tough period that I had to work really hard, but it was, it was like, it was almost like I, I want this class to be to you guys. I want this to be your level up moment. Because sometimes, you never know where you're capable of until you're putting in some sort of situation that you have to rise. You have to rise and shine. 
And working there, I was there for almost five years. So I learned a lot, work, uh, learning from John Vitro and all the creative directors there. I was the only retoucher in the building. I had my team in Brazil that was all online. So for me, it was a big, big step in growth. And like, you have to figure out, you're responsible for everything and we're dealing with these huge accounts. So I think that's why I have a little bit of my white hairs here because of those, uh, those times. But man, if I didn't have that, in my in my experience i probably wouldn't be here now and that's it any other questions <laughs>